Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to another Debrand Consulting webinar. Happy New Year to everybody. This is January 2019, and this is our Power BI and Excel webinar, basically our data analytics webinar. And I'm your host, David Brown. So today, we're going to talk about data analytics, Power BI, of course, best features for 20, 2018. So January to uh, December 2018, so many changes, so many updates, so many improvements have happened in Power BI. And for those that use Power BI a lot, you will know that there's always a regular monthly update. And the monthly updates comes with lots of goodies, right? And uh, there's Power BI Desktop, which is free to download, and that's what most people use. And you can publish on PowerBI.com. It's all about Power BI. So if you haven't joined our POG group, that's our Power BI user group in Lagos, Nigeria, please do. So that's our Power BI user group. Please join that. And also, you can join our meetup group. Lots of you are uh, joining us from our meetup group. So that's great. Let's get started. So my name is David Brown. I'm the founder and managing partner of D. Brown Consulting. I'm also a consultant to the World Bank and also a Microsoft MVP on data analytics. I've worked with Excel for almost like 22 years, worked with Power BI since the, it was launched, from the day it was launched. And um, I'm also a trainer, master trainer, master instructional designer. I do a lot of stuff on finance, modeling, valuation, and then, of course, reporting with Power BI. I also record content and develop um, materials and courses on Office Training Hub, e-learning courses. And I speak at various international events and expositions. I'm also a chartered accountant, chartered management, and chartered tax practitioner. I'm also a member of the CFA Institute, CFA Nigeria. And so I'm a finance, I'm basically an analyst, right, that likes a lot of data. So that's what I do. Right. So for us today, we're just going to talk about the top 10 Power BI updates in 2018. When I say top 10, really, it's just the 10 that we picked. There's so many excellent stuff. I mean, hundreds of stuff. So if you ask me in another day, it would be a different top 10. But this is the top 10 we managed to put together for you guys. So and then we talk about three cool 2018 custom visuals. We just have a quick look at some nice, interesting custom visuals uh, for 2018. Right. So should we get started? So how often do you guys follow Power BI updates? Yeah. How often do you follow updates on Power BI? That's the only poll I'm going to ask you today. So I'll display the answer once it's done. So I've put up the poll for you guys. How often do you follow Power BI updates? Hmm. 100% so far. Maybe more people are not voting. When I say Power BI updates, you know, every month you you go online, you watch the video. Um, um, I think it's Amanda now that does it in Power BI in Microsoft. So Amanda does the updates every month. So she puts a nice short video um, to kind of explain all the nice, wonderful things they've added. And then, of course, there's a blog that she writes uh, to give you all the updates on Power BI. So do you religiously watch that every month? Do you go and read the blog every month? So you have to tell, are you sure you do that? You read the blog every month? Yeah, so I'm very impressed. It's a real good Power BI bunch here. So that's 86% of us do that. So, okay, so I'm ending the poll. Right, so about 86% of us Oh, no, I don't follow. Oh, I'm reading the wrong thing. No one. <laughs> I don't follow is 86%. I was surprised. And uh, some months, 14% some months. Every month, nobody does. That's what I thought. Nobody follows uh, every month updates. So I advise you do. You go to YouTube, type Power BI as the search, Power BI, and, and check the updates. And what we do here at D. Brown uh, Consulting is every month we try and kind of catch up on one or two very nice things we liked in the updates, and we talk about it. So... So that's cool. So here we're just trying to do an overview of all the updates in 2018. It's going to be interesting. Right. So the first thing I'll talk about in the top 10 Power BI updates in 2018. Let's see. What's the first thing I'm going to highlight? First thing is PDF connector. PDF connector. I'm not too sure what month it was. Um, brought in but this is really really cool so let me get my demo machine on so that we could get ready let's see before you can use the pdf connector you must ensure that you switch it on right now is in beta form if i go to get data and i go to more 
anything you see and you see beta in brackets. So you see this PDF, you see beta. That means it's being tested currently and it's not generally available. So you guys will, may not see this in your, um, in your Power BI desktop. So to so make sure you see this, you need to come to file. Then you go to Sorry. So you need to come to file. So you need to come to file. Then you, you go to uh, options and settings. Then you go to options, right? So you go to options and settings and options. Then, then you see all sorts of options, but you go to preview features. You go to preview features. And then you now take all these beta stuff. So like, for example, get data from PDF, you make sure you tick it and see some new ones here. We have modeling view, you have view, filter experience, enable Q and A. So these are all the things in beta. So click okay. So all these things now available to you have enabled one or more preview features that require restarting Microsoft Power BI desktop. These changes will take effect after you restart. So obviously some of those features down there need to restart. I'm not gonna do that. So let's quickly get our data, right? So I'm gonna go to data, go to more. Let's connect to a PDF. So I connect to PDF here and I say connect. So once we say connect to PDF, uh, preview connector, the PDF connector is still under development. Please try it out and give us feedback. Of course, that's cool. So click continue. And then I've already navigated to where I want this. So I've navigated to it. This is the PDF file I showed you. So I double click it and let's have a look at what happens. Right, so double click it. Now, these are the two tables. If you remember the PDF uh, file that I showed you, there were two tables. So it, it's, I don't know, it's like magic, right? What it does is it identifies, let me open the PDF so you see it. It, it just went and connected to this PDF file and identify that there were two tables. So it's looking for tables. It's just going around looking for tables and it recognizes that this is a table and this is a table. And that's what it showed you here, that this is table and this table. So we just select these two tables. You see this table, you can see what it pulled out. And then this table, let's select the two, right? And then we can edit the query. So we select the two tables, edit the query. Your screen is coming up. Okay, so the query is in another section. Let me just bring it in for you. So this is this is the query. All right. Uh, I did a demo copy. I shouldn't be using demo copy. Okay. Uh, hmm, I'm using the copy anyway. So this is the table. And what we can do is we can rename the table. This first one was uh, by volume, and this one was by value. So I could just say um, report by volume. So enter. And I think the only cleaning up we need to do here is just remove the null. And then this one is report by value. And then I can just remove the null. Right. So click OK. And that's really it. So we can load this. Now, if you were doing this in Excel, you, you just I can load it into Excel. But here, I just close and apply. Close and apply and bring it in. So that's cool. So give this feature a thumbs up if you think you like it. What do you give this feature? One over ten. Okay, keep that in your in the chat. What would you give this feature? So this feature here, you see, we have our data, and here you can see your report by value, all the data, and your report by volume. If you want to take it to Excel, you can copy it and take it to Excel. Uh, but really. We're good in Power BI. Yeah, PDF connector, web scraping. Web scraping, now what's that? What's web scraping? 
So web scraping is just a bit similar to this PDF connector. It's that you will just go online to any website and then try and pull out data from that website. So the same way that it's pulling out data from PDF, it wants to just pull out data from a website. So let's see, what website should we go to? Let me, um, let me just take our website here and show you. So this is our website, this is D Brown Consulting's website. Okay, so this is our website. So I want to scrape some information from here. Let me even go to the uh, stock exchange as well. Let's see. Since we're talking about the stock exchange, let me put up the Nigerian stock exchange. So you can see the Nigerian stock exchange. You can see tables and stuff, all sorts of tables there. You could, you could just connect and um, connect to that uh, file. You just connect. And, and let Power BI do its thing and try and connect to the website itself and pull data that it can see in tables. Anything that looks like a table, it can pull the data out. Okay, so here we're going to scrape from a website. So how do we do that? We get data and then you go to web. So you get data from the web. You can see we just go to web with the data. Okay, so what website should we use? Let me copy our own website. I'll just copy our URL. So I'll just go copy our own URL. And let's get data this time from our website. So all you do is type out the URL for the website you want to analyze, right? And then you click OK. So it's going to go to that web page and try and pull some information from that web page. And let's see how we can scrape that web page and try and see certain things from that web page. Just connect to the web page. It's fine. So you can see it's the query Power BI, uh, Power BI's query editor. So Power Query in Power BI is trying to pull information from our website so that we're connecting to the dbrand Consulting website, and it has. Uh, eventually, it has. So now look at this. If I click Documents, Documents uh, really doesn't tell us anything. It's just a whole gibberish. So what you need to do is not click this, right? We're not going to click this. What you say is add table using example right there at the bottom. So when you are scraping from a website, you're actually just trying to pull information from a website, lots of different things on a website. Say add table using example. So what that does is, let me show you our website. If you look at our website, right, at the bottom we have, we provide four course delivery options, blah, blah, blah. Now this is in a table form, so you can actually if I highlight this, let me just highlight, it's kind of structured like a table. So Power BI will recognize this and you can pull this information out because it's structured as a table. So you need a table in your website for it to now pull the information out. So you can look at uh, um, some of us here, some pictures of some of us, uh, D Brown Consulting. If you look at my name here, this is kind of structured like a table. So it's possible to pull this information out. Anything that's structured like a table is possible to pull that information out, right? So let's see how we do that. So add table by example. It's doing that. It's bringing, giving me a file like an example. Great, it's here. Navigation to web page was canceled. What can you do? Try retype the address. Oh, okay, now it's back. Oof. Can you imagine that? So, so what we want to do, if we look at the web page, let's scroll, let's scroll, let's scroll, let's scroll down. So you can do this for any website as long as there's a table, something like a table there, all this table information. But right now, let's say I want to pull out our names. So I want to pull out the name, I want to pull out the maybe the position, and then I want to pull out um, maybe just a s overview of the person. Name, position, and overview, or a profile. So this column one is going to be the name. So I want to pull out the names. Then we have column two. 
is going to be the position. And then we're going to have column three where we, we want to pull out the profile. Yeah, or short profile, right? Oops, sorry. Name, position, and then short profile. So here, if you click, if I click in this space here, it'll kind of bring out a list of of things that you could put in there. I just double click in there. So I'm looking for my name, David. Let me just type David. So you can see my name here. See name. Click. Then I come into position. I can double click there. Position. I know this principal something. So principal. Let's see principal con. Uh, the principal of brand consulting so that's this see that's the position if you look up here that's there so click okay oh sorry i supposed to double click principal double click come on let me just delete and then the profile is a proven, let's say a proven, there we go, okay. Now, if you click on the second one, we need more examples. So let's say princess, princess, right? Then you can see once I come to the next one, it kind of found two other people, right? It's like filling by example, just like um, flash fill in Excel. So princess, I would say sales and marketing. Okay. Okay, I'm supposed to double click it. Then here we can say princess has overseen, double click. Then when you come here, you can see that Tosin is already filled for Tosin, what she needs, we, we need, let's go down and see. Tosin, financial director, so let's do that. Financial director, let me double click. So come down here, double click, show. Executive director. So that's how it now fills out. Oops, sorry, I supposed to double click. That's how it now fills out the rest and stuff from example. So, so that's how you kind of build out from an example. And then it automatically, anytime you update this on the website, it will just update in Excel. Or, I mean, in, in Power BI, not Excel. So, so that's, that's, that's how it works. And that's how you pull out a custom table and then you edit it and load it into, into, uh, Power BI, right? So that, that's it. That's scraping website. Well, so what's the next um so what's the next one what's the next trick so that yeah someone is asking so it's going to scrape data from that particular page so that particular page you want to scrape data from then you can go and scrape data from another page you can scrape data separate from various pages bring all the queries in and then you can now do if you want, you can now do a merge query. Do you get? You can do a merge query, and stuff like that. So, so once you scrape from one, you can obviously scrape from many more. So that's how good, that's how cool it is. Right. So that's scraping. Please explore it. It's very cool. It takes a while to set up, but once you've done it, you've automated. The next thing we're going to talk about is fuzzy match. Fuzzy match is like VLOOKUP without the with the, without a really unique reference. Okay, fuzzy lookup, fuzzy match. Let me show you a table. If I show you a table that doesn't have, has a kind of strange, strange looking thing that VLOOKUP can work on. So if you look at the table on the screen, you would see that, okay, I have transactions, I have customer name, I have transaction amount, ID, customer, customer name, and location. So 
what I want to see is I want to have transaction date, customer name, and then transaction amount. And I also want location here. So this Ahmed Oyelowo is to be, here is Oyelowo Ahmed. It's not the same. VLOOKUP can work here. But there's something called Fuzzy Lookup we're going to use now. So I'm going to close this and we're going to open it in Power BI. I just close it here. I won't save. Right. And then in Power BI itself, we're going to go and look for data. So I'm going to data. I'm going to go to Excel, get data from Excel. I'm going to Fuzzy Data. So that Fuzzy Data table. So we're going there to see if we can get data and see if we can do this. Uh, fuzzy lookup right so what we want to do is bring in that two for those two files so we're bringing in uh, what's it called uh customer customer and then transactions right so we're bringing in these two files so once we bring in these two files say okay okay so we have these two files and if you look at it, we have customers, ID, customer name, location, transaction, transaction date, customer name, transaction amount, right? So I can start with these transactions. And all we want to do is merge these two queries, right? So how do we merge? You come to the top right here and you say merge queries. Let's merge queries as a new one. So we're going to create a new query. And in this new query, I want to take transactions and then I want to take customers. So if you see the query, I want to have, I want to compare customers here in, and against customers here. See, I've just highlighted customers here and then I've highlighted customers down here. Now, unfortunately, if you look at the bottom, it's very small, I'll read it to you. The selection has matched zero out of the first 13 rows. That means it can match anything. So. What you need to do is come to this use fuzzy match to perform the merge. So if I click on tick, use fuzzy match, it's now some magic. It's already analyzed it and said, oh, this Ahmed Oyelo is kind of similar to Oyelo Ahmed. And now it has 13 out of 13. It has matched everything, right? So that's what this fuzzy match. You can click on this fuzzy match options and you see ignore case match by combining uh, text parts. Maximum number of matches of op match options. This is the advanced. If you really want to go deep into fuzzy match, you could go read about this advanced form. But right now it's worked for us. It's matched everything. We can say okay. And now we have a merge query. See this merge query, which I can call uh, fuzzy. Fuzzy match, right? So it's not a fuzzy match. And with this fuzzy match, now I have the transaction date, I have the customer name, I have the transaction amount, and then I have a table here which I can expand. This table is from the other table. I can expand it, and then I can say, do you know what, I just want location. I don't want anything else, just location. And then my location comes in. And now I have my expanded merge table, it's just like a VLOOKUP. And this is permanent, this is automatic for life. So anytime I data in Excel, updates this updates automatically cool let's go to our next trick what do you think about this trick vote for it how good is it how good is this trick so someone is asking if you can do this with excel the, the thing with excel right is that the, the the power query in excel depends on the version of excel you have right if you have the latest 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 excel maybe you're using office 365 that is excel for office 365 and the latest version yes you can do this in excel because the power query there will be updated fully right but you some have excel 2013 and they've installed power query add-on some have excel 2016 and it's installed power query add-on so excel 2016 is just what you had in excel 2016 uh, all the updates are not really there. If you have Office 365, yes, you get full updates. Now, Excel 2019 is out. And even 2019 doesn't have some things, right? Because um, if you want the full stuff in Excel, what you should do is watch our next webinar on financial modeling because our next webinar on financial modeling is going to talk all, all about these various versions of Excel and it's going to give you the most gangster version of Excel you must have. That is the one that... Um, has everything so check out that it starts at 11 o'clock today go to dbrownconsulting.net click on webinar and register for that financial modeling webinar it's starting at 11 today all right so next thing we see is m intellisense so what's m intellisense what does that mean let's check it out 
So for those that know that you no know Power Query, the language of Power Query is M. That's the language of Power Query. Power Query uses a language called M. For you to see how that language works, you need to go to, let's go to a view, and then we'll go to Advanced Editor. So if you go to Advanced Editor, that's where you see the query. So this is the query, for example. This is the last query um, let in. Now, Power Query is uh, it's a case-sensitive language. So this source, for example, you must make sure it's capital letter. So if you want to, you continue here, for example, I put a comma, I type table. Once I type table, right, you'll see that all the different tables come out. Table, all the commands, all, all the functions for table comes out. Table.add column, table.add index column, table.buffer. All these, I can just take my mouse up and down and then tab, right? And then it types it all out. So this is this is IntelliSense. It's just like Excel when you type a function and it gives you help on that function, right? So this is a super, super tool. I mean, IntelliSense. Just helping you write your M code easy, more easily. All right. So I don't need this. Cancel. So the next thing we did is we want to do a report. So let me um, close my query. Let me apply and close. Okay, so all those queries that I did, I was in Power, uh, Power Query in Power BI. It's just applying those queries. So next thing we're going to do is talk about distribution. So when we say distribution, one thing when you're analyzing data is you need to know how the data is distributed. That is something more like standard deviation. Standard deviation is simply you have a standard, and maybe your standard is your budget, right? How have has everything deviated from your budget? That's all standard deviation is. And really, that's key to statistics. So how is your data distributed? You measure that with standard deviation. But you don't need to do all these maths. It's just click, click, click in Power BI, right? So just see how it's done in Power BI. Let's pick a report. So let's show you a report. Let me pick something. So look at this report. We have revenue by region. We have revenue by month. So. When you want to do a distribution, you have your your value, which is revenue, and then you have a category, which is, let's say, here's region. So if I come to this table in Power BI, all I need to do is right click it and then come to analyze. When you go to analyze, you see find where this distribution is different. So click. Then what it's doing right now is insights. It's doing a little AI stuff. It's going in through and just looking for insights, yes? So it's analyzing right now, it's gonna come up, just wait for a few seconds, and guess what, See, this is the distribution. What is this analysis? So this even explains stuff to you. See how individual filter values impact the distribution. The original distribution is shown in gray and is compared to the selected filter. Okay, so the original distribution is shown in gray and is compared to the selected filter. So that's just an explanation for you. Cool, yes, we got it. Now look at it, the original distribution is shown in gray, and then this selected filter. So you have revenue for, this is model code. So it's slicing your data by model code and showing you that um, code, the model, model 5001P, has the most distribution, so to, so to say, right? So comparing proportions, you can remove not comparing proportions, but of course we need to compare proportions. So scroll down. This is by line of business ID. These are the IDs for line of business. The original distribution is gray, and then this is the other distribution. So you could, it just gives you insights, insights that you may not know. So if you have a very complex model, the insights are really interesting. And if you like any insight, let's say we like this guy, right? So you like this insight. You, you can I can change it to the other things if you like, and I like it. I keep a plus there, and when I press that plus there, you can see it has entered into our report. So if I come and click into our report, see it's now in our report. It's part of our report. Look at that, right? So that's how you 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 basically take Power BI and let it do a distribution analysis, and then tell you more insights about your data. I could click on this for example and do the same thing. Analyze. I do an analyze, explain the difference, right? It does the same analysis. It's very powerful, very, very powerful. But key thing for you is you have to have your data already distributed. So this is a time series. This one is broken down by time series. So you could see something like a, a waterfall chart. A waterfall chart starting here in 2010 and ending here in 2011. How nice is this insight? So this insight says, okay, we started at 7.8 billion, then 
keyboards, laptops, computers. So these are the various pro products until we now got to 2011. And this is what we have, 11 billion. From 7.8 billion to 11 billion, right? What another insight? Let's see another insight. See another insight? Uh, so it's, it's really, really cool. Really cool. So this is one insight. Scroll down. Another insight. Another insight. Another insight. And once you see these insights, you can now ask yourself, what's all these insights about? And then it's telling you a story about your data. And that story is what you can now go and use in your next meeting to analyze your data. Anyone you like, you can just click and then uh, add it to your add it to your report, isn't it? So you just click on this plus sign here and add it to your report. And, and look at it, it's adding to our report. It's coming in now. It's still give it a little bit more time, it will come in. So that's it. That's I think is a cool one. Add column from example. Add column from example. How many of us here use um, what they call flash fill in Excel? So they have an equivalent now in Power BI of flash fill. So let me show you how that works. So let's go back to our demo. Click on the demo. Is a demo share right? So let me go to page two. So how does flash fill in Excel work? Well, let me go to get data again. This time, uh, let me get data. Let me edit. Let me just edit a query. Let me edit a query that currently exists. Let's edit it. Let me see what query I can edit. Now all this data uh, file was not correct for some reason my source i have to change my source to okay anyway i need to get data let me just get data directly okay let me just change my source so i browse 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 webinar data analytics uh excel uh, data excel dump click Click OK. It's going to update my data. For some reason, the updates didn't uh, work. So I'm just updating the data. So my data is updated. This is my clean data. Oops, sorry. Data is updated. Binary rename column. The data has changed. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to open a file that I saved, a backup file I saved. Um, or do you know what? Let me just use another query. Let's use this one. So let's use this query. So if I use this query, let me fill by example here. So this is, if you zoom here, see if I can zoom. Uh, transaction, which one is easier to look at? So here is a query. I'm going to come and insert a column here. So add column. So under to do that um, flash fill, you go to column from example and say from selection. Say column from example. Under add column, you say column from example and say from selection. Once you say from selection, it's going to do something like this. Create a column here. So see these names. Let, okay, let me see these locations. I want locations by just two letter locations. So, um, I will actually, I'm supposed to highlight the column first. Let me cancel. Let me highlight this column and they say from selection, right? So now I'm going to just type inside here. I'm just going to type LA for Lagos, right? And then here I'm going to type AB for Abuja. And once I just type those two, you will see that it's already filled everything out. It's just filled everything out. So when I click OK, and this first character. So I'm just going to call this um, uh, state short name or something, short name. Yeah, state short name. When I click OK, what it has done is a bit like Excel. It's gone and write, written like uh, a code. So you see the code here. You can see it well, but it's table dot add column expand customer state short name is the name. Each text dot start location two. Now, if you know Excel very well, you know that this is left. It's a function in Excel called left, and the number of things is extracting from the left is two. So this is the equivalent in, um, in, in Power BI, but it's flash fill. That's the same idea as flash fill. Really cool. I, I, I like this one a lot. It helps you understand M code as well. So you learn M a lot with this new cool tool. 
So add columns was next. And the next one that was really cool as well is buttons and bookmarks. Having buttons and bookmarks. That's another one. Buttons and bookmarks. So let me close. Let me come back to Power BI. So yeah, we have bookmarks. Bookmarks was, I think, I'm not sure if bookmarks were added in 2018. I think more like 2017, one of the last things in 2017. Bookmarks are really, really cool. Uh, what, what do they, what, is, what do I mean by bookmarks? If I go to um, uh, view, under view, you see certain things. You can see selection pane, sync slices, also a very nice feature. And you have bookmark pane. If I click on bookmark pane to the right, you see a bookmark pane. So this bookmark pane, yeah, bookmarking something. So what people do most times is bookmark a focus view. So for example, I want, maybe I want to focus on this particular report. I don't know, it's supposed to be focus. I want to focus on this report. So this button here is called focus mode. But many people don't know about it, right? So many people don't know you could click on this and then it kind of gives you a focus only on that visual and then you can click on go back to your report. So to help people that don't know this, we're going to create our own button and just say focus, right? So how do we create our own button? We go to home. Under home, right in the middle, we have buttons, buttons here. So if I click on the drop down for button, you see that you can have a button, uh, left arrow, right arrow. This left arrow just means go back to one report and then right arrow means go to the next report. Reset. Well, just re resetting your current reports for removing all the filters. Back, forward, information, help, Q&A, but then this is the key one, bookmark. Now, if you click on blank, that means you can just decide which one of these you use, right? So even let me click on blank. So I click on blank, and what happens is I've created this small button that doesn't make sense right now. This is just on its own, right? This button, and it's blank. So let's now populate it right let's let's populate it but before we do that we obviously have to have created a bookmark but let me just show you what this button does so this button you can see the button text is off let's put it on i'm going to put it on and under this button text to the right i'm going to say focus uh, or or expand let me just say expand i think that's easier to understand expand so i'm just writing expand there i'm going to increase the um font size maybe to yeah, expand yeah or say click to expand maybe i could say click to expand or something like that right so that, that's my button so my button is useless on its own because i want to tie it to a bookmark so i have to create a bookmark first so i click on this and i'm going to add a bookmark so i'm going to click on this focus mode right and then i'm going to add a bookmark so this bookmark I'll call it, um, let me rename it, to rename it, uh, expand, expand, or let me just call it rev, rev for region. Let's just say rev for region, right? Revenue for region. Revenue for region. I say add, right. So if I go back, now when I click on this, it's highlighting it, can you see that? So the bookmark is working here, but we don't want our users to keep going to bookmark. They don't know that. So we're gonna click on this, our um, visual here. So this this uh, box, we we'll click on this box and we're, that is the button. And then we go visualizations for the button and then we're going to make it work. So this is the button is on. Let's go to the action. So I'm going to the action. I'm putting the action on, the action on for the button to the right. Then you see the type of action you want is bookmark. That's the action. We have back, bookmark, and Q&A. We want bookmark. And under bookmark, you see none. So we now pick the new bookmark we just did, revenue for region. And then you have tooltips. Tooltips here are very cool, but we'll talk about tooltips later. Check it out. You can tooltips means when someone hovers over this, they could see something. So you could see some nice information there. But so right now we've created this bookmark, and the bookmark is now clickable. If I click, it's going to expand. Hold my control and click. It expands. Go back. If I publish this as a dashboard, you don't need to hold control. But right now to click, you need to hold control and click, and then it comes here. Perfect.
So if you uh that kind of designer, you know how to design some really wonderful reports. Click, 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 click. Everybody sees all sorts of wonderful stuff. So it's very powerful. Very, very powerful if you build reports. We have top N QA, top N QA. So for the QA, top N QA just means QA has just gotten even more even better, much, much better again than before. We could just type, let's see if I double click in here. I could just type something in the q a you know when you double click uh, the canvas is just q a comes up another way to get q a is you come to home and then you see ask a question that's what q a is ask a question and then we could type something as uh, simple as what are the top five uh, regions what are the top five actually top five regions uh, right away, you can see top five regions come out. Just, it just, it just popped out. Right? Let's say by revenue. Right? It's by revenue. Enter, and here we are. These are the top five regions by revenue. Let me say top three, maybe. See? Double click. What are the top three regions? There you have, these are the top three regions. So Q&A is wonderful, just type and that's it. Another thing they added, if I look at this report, and maybe I don't like this color, for example, now in the visualization, you can search because sometimes the formatting in the visualization is so difficult to get. So you could type color in here and color is the American spelling for color. Yeah, you type color and everything about color comes out. Then you pick the one you don't like and then change it to another color, change it. so. You don't need to kind of struggle to search for what kind of commands you need. Maybe I want the font size to change. I just type font. And then here I have the font size, the font family and the font size. And I can increase my fonts, reduce my fonts, anything I'd like, right? Or size, I could type size. So this is cool. Whenever you're using formatting, just use the search. It's much easier, right? The last trick is copy and paste between Power BI desktop files. This is a very cool thing they added in 2018. Copy and paste within desktop files. So what you do is you open another Power BI desktop file and then you can easily copy and paste between the two. So if I like, this is, I like this report, but I had already created another Power BI um, a report in another Power BI desktop file, I can just copy and paste them, All right? I can copy and paste them. So I'm just creating another report. I'm opening another report. And all you need to do, you like this report, copy the report and paste. And that's it. You just click, click. So you just click like this, click and click. Control C and control v just like you know in excel right control c control v and yeah you're ready you're ready to roll so let me close this one okay this is a bit slow guys don't save so it's quite slow Okay, let's open. Open. Okay, let's just open something. Let me open this report here. So just opening my Power BI report. Okay, it's opening. It's taking a while, it's pulling all the data in and pulling the connections in and stuff, updating all the tables and reports and refreshing. So I like this report a lot, so I copy this report and 
I want to go to another Power BI report. and paste it in there. Okay, it's opening. It's taking a while. It's taking quite a while to open. Sorry about that, guys. It's slow for some reason today. Okay, you know what? I it's too too slow for us. We'll you'll we'll have to take my word for it, guys. That, that works. Okay. It's too slow, too slow. All right, so it's just way too slow for us. So let, let's let's move on. So let's move on. It's the copy and paste Power BI desktop file. So just make sure both files are open, the two Power BI desktop files are open, and then you just copy from one, take it to the other, and it moves all with its data model and everything, Same similar data model, and just updates. So we're supposed to also show you three cool 2018 custom visuals. We'll do custom visual, um, do lots of custom visuals for the next webinar for February. So we'll, we'll add these to these there. These were some nice custom visuals we wanted to talk about. And this was your Power BI features, best features for 2018. PDF connector, web scraping, fuzzy match lookup, M IntelliSense, distribution factor insights. You get some insights on distribution. Add column from example, which is the same as um, flash fill in Excel. Buttons and bookmarks, top end reporting using Q and A. Just type your question and in words, and it just comes out with a report. Search the format control. So instead of looking for your formatting, just type into the search. You want to do something on color, type color. You want to do something on font size, type font size. That's just it. And then copy and paste between Power BI files. So that's what the last one that we tried to show you, but the files are not opening. But that's it. So those are our top ten. For 2018, 2019 promises to be really, really cool. There are lots of new features coming in. And we have a Power BI training that we're going to do for you guys. And there's a live meetup coming up this year as well. So before the end of March, we want to have a live meetup. You just come to a location and we do a live meetup. So that's going to happen. So please just stay tuned and you, we will tell you all about it. So if you stay tuned, kind of join our newsletter and we'll tell you all about that. So. That was it. And about the sponsors, the Browns Consulting sponsors these webinars. We do training, consulting, and payroll. You could reach us on dbrownconsulting.net or you could do our online courses on office training hub.com. So that's office training hub.com. And you're going to get a free Power BI course coming soon on office training hub.com and some very full, nice, detailed Power BI courses to learn Power BI. Right. So thank you very much. And these are some of our affiliates, Microsoft ATD and Financial Modeling Institute. If you like financial modeling, join us on the next webinar, which is starting in like an hour's time, where we're going to talk a lot about Excel and the new features in Excel. So I was David Brown, and I'm from D. Brown Consulting and managing partner of D. Brown Consulting and also an Excel and Power BI um, kind of fan and also a Microsoft MVP. Thanks a lot for joining me, and we'll see you next month on our Excel and Power BI webinar series. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.